Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Do you know, I've been doing so much upcycling lately, just thrifting, refashioning, and it's been so much fun. Really, that's what I'm all about. But once in a while, I go into a fabric store and I fall in love. And there's just no helping it. Like the heart wants what the heart wants. This was what happened recently. Can you see that? It's the most beautiful thing. It combines three of my favorite things. It has a paisley print with a tie-dye kind of wash over it, and it's in the colors of the sky after the sun has set, like twilight colors. That just kills me every time. I am in love. And so I had, to, I had to buy some fabric, and then I shopped around for a pattern that would look nice with it. So I landed on Vogue 1412. It's got two different views, and I'm gonna do A. And so I thought, you know what, it might make a really nice video to show some skills that you might want to build. So Vogue patterns are not super beginner friendly. Honestly, they are one of the more challenging of the pattern companies and they're not super cheap. I got to say this was like, that's $30 Canadian. So really today is not about saving money. It's not about saving the environment. It really is just about building skills and making something beautiful. But I will focus in on a few key skills that I want to share with you. The first being how to mark and sew the pleats that go down the front and then the concealed button placket down the front. I can't remember if I've ever done concealed buttons. I don't really think so. And then it has just a simple collar band. It looks simple, but those little front corners like the same as on a collar with a collar stand, those little front corners can be super tricky to get that really nice and neat. So I'm actually gonna show two ways of doing that, their way and my way, and we'll just see whichever way you like best. And then the sleeve placket. View A that I'm going to be doing shows the more like involved placket that you would see like on a men's shirt. And that's a beautiful placket to do, and I do that on menswear, but on women's wear, honestly, I don't do that kind of placket. I do the view B, they call it a continuous lap, and it's just a million times easier. And I'm gonna show you my method, which is easier than what they show in the instructions. The fabric is, I think, a rayon kind of chalet, so it's very soft and drapey. I've already pre-washed it in the same way that I will wash the garment, like I just washed it in cold and hung it up to dry. It's ready to go. It's just really soft and drapey, beautiful. I think I bought a little extra. I think I bought two yards. So I'll show you kind of the summarized process as I go through. I hope you enjoy watching. Hope you get some good skills. Let's get busy. There's the finished garment measurement for the bust and for the hip. So I'm just using a few different weights and the rotary cutter to cut but then I'm also going to be snipping my notches. I like to put a notch, anything that's on the fold, so the center back, I'm just gonna replace that circle with a notch that's pointing towards those circles. These circles here match up with circles on the sleeve. And so I'm gonna also replace that with a notch, a snip pointing toward my size. Now these snips have to be really small or else you'll have a hole in your seam, just big enough to see an eighth of an inch, three millimeters maybe. I never cut notches with the rotary cutter, always just with the tip of scissors. And even the pleat, I'm just gonna mark with notches. Now, since I'm using the continuous lap, I don't need such a long slash line. Maybe three and a half inches is fine. For that continuous lap piece, I don't like working with a piece so skinny that they give you. It's just one inch wide. I use a piece that is at least two and a half inches wide, cut on the bias still, like there's your grain line, it's on the bias, and a little extra long. So I didn't use that piece at all for the continuous lap. For all this detailing at the center front, I need to cut right down that center front and then over on that angle. I've thrown a few pins in here because I do not want this to shift around on me at all for this. So just to where that angle starts and then right to the corner there. Okay, a little bit nerve wracking, but that's fine. With that center front cut now, I'll need to trace these lines onto both sides of the top. So I've actually already traced them onto one side and now I'll trace onto the other. And again here, I wanna be just as accurate as possible. And I'm throwing in a few pins. So now I wanna fold it back on that stitching line. And I think it will be smart for me to mark the stitching lines with a dotted line. And then I'll mark the fold lines with a solid line. 
So dotted line here. I want to mark where I stop too. I don't want my line to just taper off. And then shift my pins over and mark the fold line there. Fold my pattern piece back on the fold line. I was taught in home ec class to use um, tracing paper and a tracing wheel. And I really don't like that. It, it's really hard to get that off. It's also like more of a pain in the butt. And then a dotted line, just exactly as it is on the pattern, just so I don't get as confused. I often get asked if I would please sew with a contrasting color thread so that you can see the details better. And honestly, I will when I can. Okay, I don't sew something just to make a video and then chuck it like that just goes against my values. So where I can, I will change my thread color if it's something that's not going to affect the final garment. When I do the collar and when I set the sleeve, I'll switch to a contrasting thread there. Yeah, I'm going to use the best lighting that I can to help you see the black thread on this dark fabric. Bear with me, I'll talk you through it. I'll show you in as close detail as I can. I think you'll pick up some good skills. So the first sewing step is to make these tucks on the front, crease along the fold lines and stitch along the stitching lines. So that means I'm gonna be folding on the solid lines and sewing on the dotted lines. So I'm gonna just start right here, grab that along that solid line and I'll have it this way up so that I can see my stitching line. No problem. Okay. So I'm holding the other end of that pleat so I can keep it kind of taut and then I just need to make sure that that solid line stays right along the edge here. I can also see where this is leading me to be at the 2.5 centimeter or 1 inch line here. Next one, fold it on the solid line, keep everything else out of the way and then sew it on the dotted line. I want to have the pleats away from the center toward the side and then I just want the, these pleats to just naturally release there. I don't want to press that all the way down. So a bit of arranging with your hands first. Oh, I still had my iron super high from doing the interfacing. I would cry if I melted my fabric right now. So there you go, that's, that's pretty nice. The pleats do get hidden in the fabric, but they'll give a nice movement and texture. And then turn it under about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch on the one long edge of the left front band. The left front band with that bit turned under is going to be getting sewn to the left edge of that opening. And this is where I have the little cutout. So I want to place it here, but I want to see there. So I'm going to flip this. I can't run out of seam allowance here or else I'm toast. I never just pin starting from one end and make my way to the other. Always pinning matching points and then pin in between. So I'll sew down here at the 15 line or 5 8 line and then that should land me right at that little cutout corner right there. I just zipped along here at the 15 line and then ended right at the corner of that cutout. So now I'm pressing the seam allowance toward the band and it says to turn up this little bit of seam allowance at the bottom here. So I'll just turn up that little smidge, that's all I've got. We're going to fold this in half and just cover over that line that I just sewed. So with that tucked all in nicely, this is the ditch between my band and the body. I'm going to pin in the ditch and make sure I'm catching the edge. I only want to catch a little bit of the edge. So pinning in the ditch, catching just the edge. I can either stitch in the ditch or I can stitch on the edge of this Band. Okay, so you, can you see how I've just caught the edge with my pins? I think I will do an edge stitch right there. I can feel that folded edge in here, so I know I'm catching it. I'm trying to use good lighting so that you can see there's where the buttons are going to sit, and then the two pleats beside that at both sides of the center front. That'll be nice. Okay, so now this is the right front band. This is the facing section. It says to fold that facing to the wrong side along the fold line. The fold line is an inch and an eighth, almost three centimeters from the edge. Good, so I'll just turn under that amount. Then it says to make the buttonholes on this piece. Okay, I guess I can do that. 
So I'm just going to put a pin at each bottom end of the buttonholes and I'm just sticking those right into my ironing board so that I can then peek underneath and get a pin in sideways at each of those pins. So to make sure that my buttonholes all line up, I'm just going to put the edge of my buttonhole presser foot right up against the edge of the fabric and I'm starting at each pin and going up. And I'll trim my threads and cut open the buttonholes with these little small manicure scissors. Never a seam ripper. Bad things can happen with seam rippers. So four buttonholes sewn. Good. So now this band with the buttonhole sewn into it is going to sew onto the right front the same way I did the other band. It's going to go here, but I want to sew it from the other side so that I know I catch that little cutout corner. I always like sewing with the edge on my right, so I'm actually on this one going to be starting at the bottom and coming up. And so then I just sewed that edge on starting right from where my little cutout is and coming up. And so same thing as the other side, pushing my seam allowance toward the band and turning up the little bottom edge of the band itself. Now this next part I gotta say is confusing. We're going to fold down about four centimeters and I'm going to press that outer edge. So instead of stitching in the ditch and catching that folded edge here where the buttonholes are, have it open, I'll stitch onto the placket so it's still from the outside, but just instead of having the button placket folded, it's open. I've sewn just beside the edge of the placket and now the buttons can fold close. I think that's going to work out just fine and it looks great. To finish off this whole front opening, now there's still that little triangle piece in the middle, right? I'm going to put the left side behind that triangle, the right side on top and try to get everything looking nice and neat and level and then just stitch across the bottom here. Okay, oof, this is fiddly. I am experiencing a bit of an angle here, but I think if I sew it straight across, it'll end up looking decent. I might do two lines. I just want to make sure I'm catching everything there. I think that'll do just fine. It's all right. So I'm getting as much light on here as I can so that hopefully you can see. There are the two tucks on either side, then the concealed button placket here. The buttonholes, well oh, I can't even see them, there they are, the buttonholes are in there. So I think we're looking pretty sweet. So once the whole front was done, then I went ahead and sewed it right side together with the back, the shoulder seams and side seams, I finished my edges and I pressed my seams toward the back. So now the next step is the collar. I'm getting a little worried that as the tucks release at the bottom, it might look a little maternity, so that's a fear. You're joining the two interface pieces at the shoulder seam. So I've sewn and pressed those seams open. Same thing on the uninterfaced pieces, but here's where I can use a contrasting thread to show you something. Now the instructions say to go to the iron and turn your seam allowance under, which is really a fiddly and annoying step to do. So I'm making two changes. One is that, first of all, I don't recommend turning in your whole seam allowance because you do need a little edge to catch in that ditch. So if I'm sewing at the at 5 8 or the 15 line, I'm going to be turning up maybe an eighth of an inch less. And then the second thing is you can see here that I sewed around basically drawing myself a line in that contrast color. I would normally just do that in the same thread to help you be able to see. I just sewed around in a long basting stitch at a little less than 5 eighths, a little less than the 15 line. So it draws a line for me of where I'm going to be folding. And if that shows at the final garment, it's easy to pull out. I can easily turn it on that thread line. Having that line sort of drawn for you makes it way easier to make a little fold like this on a curve, on a straight like on the cuff, it's not difficult to do this, but on a curve, the line helps a lot. So now the instructions say to trim this seam allowance down. I'm not going to trim this end because I want to show you a different way of doing these little corners. 
just so you know you always have options and those two just go right side together now match up the shoulder seams and then this is the side that I trimmed so this is where I'll be showing you like the technique that Vogue is recommending I'll be sewing at the 15 line and coming right over you can see where my little fold is here right I'll just sew right to the bottom of that fold and then on this corner where I didn't trim down the extra I'll just ignore that corner that I pressed and bring it the edges right together here like that and I'll sew right to the bottom of this here so I'll be sewing all around right to the bottom of the raw edge on this side Try to get nice smooth curves around this collar band and do that by making little small pivots. So then this is the one with the fold and I'll just end right at that point. So you see that has the fold still, but then this one doesn't, it's sewn right down to the bottom. I'm just putting the two together to compare that my two curves are the same. Yep, I think they're pretty good. So then it's just a matter of trimming down the extra, again, just to reduce the bulk. The instructions say turn and press as if that's easy. It's really not easy. It's such a little <laughs> snaky piece now. I don't, I'm not having fun right now. I can just painstakingly arrange a little section. I'm trying to get the seam right out to the edge. And then once I painstakingly arranged a little section, then press that flat. Seriously, one little section at a time. Yeah, this is fiddly. Oh my goodness. This is where being patient comes in. Okay, now it's just a matter of pinning the collar right side together with the top. What I want to do is bring the edge of my button placket here, that center edge, and snuggle it right against the seam of the collar here, like that front seam. Snuggle those two edges right together. You don't wanna have any little gap in between. So I'm bringing the, the button placket right against that seam and pinning that down. Now this has gathering, remember, around the neck, and I did put the gathering stitch in there, so now I'm just pinning the shoulder seam of the body to the shoulder seam of the band. Remember I replaced the circle with a notch. So that's where I want the gathering to start. So now you can see exactly how much to gather it. There's no real point in pulling up your gathering stitch before you get to this point. Okay, so now you can see the gathers forming. So I'll pull a little bit from this side and then a little bit from the other side, making sure that it's the same thread. So once the gathering thread has pulled it up to the right side, just take your end of your thread and just wrap it around your pin a little bit so that it can't slip back out and then you can easily spread out the gathers so they're nicely distributed in that little space. You don't want to have like flat spots and big bumpy spots, just nice and even. Lots of pins when you're gathering to make it all remain evenly distributed. And the pins should, all, should be vertical like that when you're gathering. It just keeps your gathers more organized. Pin all your matching points, shoulder seams together, center back together, and then, then pull up your gathering thread. And then lots of pins. So it does take some patience. Probably even testing your patience just watching this whole section. Uh, don't worry, I'm getting there. So the whole collar is pinned. It's got about a million pins in it. Let's sew that. This is the Vogue technique where we've got it folded. That folded edge of the collar band is coming in here. I'm gonna sew right even with that edge of the collar and see if that goes well. Okay, here we go. Keeping that bottom like the other edge of the collar out of the way I'm gonna have to check that a lot each time I take out a pin I'll use it to either smooth out or gather up the section I'm working on there coming into the corner that's my technique I can just stay at the 15 line I don't have to worry too much about the other side on this one Sometimes you can end up with this little annoying corner sticking out. So I'm good on this side. Let's check the Vogue side. Pretty good there too. Not bad. Okay. So now we want to push that seam allowance all up into the collar. There definitely are like thicker and thinner sections, which does bug me. I have to admit, 
I don't love that. I might just sew that in a little closer right there. On such a skinny collar, an eighth of an inch really does show. So I'm going to try to just shave off a little bit of that curve there because I don't like that it looks uneven. Well, that was an easy fix. That's better. That took what, like two seconds? And sometimes a two second adjustment like that is worth it. Like, I think it's not a bad thing to be a little bit picky. So I can trim this seam allowance. Good. So I pulled out my white thread and I pulled out the gathering stitches that were around the neck and I pressed the seam allowance going up into the collar. And now this is the Vogue technique where you're tucking everything in nice and neat. See that little corner of seam allowance that wants to stick out? I don't really want to cut it off because then I have just a smaller and smaller bit that won't tuck in properly. So I don't want to cut it, even though it's super tempting, just tuck it in and then we'll pin that down. Instructions say that we're going to slip stitch this, which means you're going to sew that by hand with a needle and thread. And then you'll top stitch it from the outside and I'm going to hide my knot in here somewhere. There, my knot is hidden in between the layers now and this would be a good place to use a thimble if you are a thimble user. Okay, so I just want to pick up the very edge of that collar band and then come right back into the body and I can kind of come back and forth like weaving my needle in between the layers. As long as I'm covering up all the stitching and um, my slip stitch doesn't show. Can you see that? Those stitches are never going to show. And then I'm not taking a pick like that in the body because look, it's going to show there, right? So the slip stitch has to be in the seam allowance part of the neckline, but you're still trying to cover the seam allowance. That takes quite a bit of patience, but that would be beautiful, no doubt. So that Vogue technique, A+, plus, looking good, it just takes patience, right? Um, not to say that my technique doesn't take patience, it's just different. Let me just show you. Okay, so on the other side, where I did not cut off that seam allowance. Now I'm gonna do what's called stuffing the sausage. So I am pushing all of this into that collar. The collar is now basically right sides together. It just has this body stuffed in there, right? And I wanna get everything snuggled right in. Bring my seam allowance together here, edges together. And then I'm gonna sew on that same sewing line. It looks like I wobbled here, so I would normally sew on the same sewing line, but I think I'll try and do a better job this time. There, I'll sew straight on there. And I can go a little way, not too, too far, because the stuffing gets bigger than the sausage. About like that will be good. So I'm basically sewing that collar inside out, and then I'll be able to pull it out, and it should give me a really nice, clean finish on that corner. I'm going to start up here on the side so that I can back tack and give a nice clean pivot and come around because we will be cutting off the extra fabric on the corner here so I don't want to lose both back tacks. So I'll back tack up here, pivot and come around. I'm just going super slow so I don't miss that corner. I want to do my pivot exactly where I want to do my pivot. In fact, I might have gone one stitch too far. Let's just back up that train. Okay, here we go. I fixed my little wobble, and now I'm just making sure nothing is getting caught in the seam that I don't want to get caught in the seam. And then that'll do. You can do that same stuff the sausage, even if there's a collar set into the collar stand, it just gets all packed up in there. It works pretty well. So now I'm cutting off that extra fabric around the corner. And then I can just pull my stuffing out of the sausage. Good. That's the outside looking sharp. And the inside, the inside looks better. Oh no, that is the outside. <laughs> I couldn't even tell the inside from there. There's the outside looking good. And then the inside looks almost as good. Looks sharp, right? And then the rest of the way, I'll show you stitching in the ditch. I just want to keep my seam allowance coming up into the collar band, cover over that stitching. 
And then from the outside, if everything's sitting nice, now I pin right in the ditch, pointing towards where I'm starting to sew. It takes some patient pinning, and you might think, well, might as well just slip stitch it then, if you're gonna do all that fussing around with the pins. And maybe you're right, like you choose which technique you think works better for your skill level and your patience level, really. This section seems easier. I've got a little bit more to work with. So covering over, flip to the outside, pin in your ditch, and all of the pins going that way. You want to make sure the shoulder seam is still lined up. Don't let yourself be off like that. There's the seam and there's the seam. If I do that, I'm going to have a problem over here. So keep yourself in line there. And I'm just catching the edge. I'm feeling like a combination of the two techniques is the way to go. I really like um, the stuffing the sausage on the corner, but now the stitching in the ditch part is getting to be more frustrating than slip stitching would be. Stuff the sausage on both corners and then slip stitch the rest might be a good way to go. So you know what, I'm kind of a fan now of the slip stitch. I do prefer my corner, the stuffing the sausage, but slip stitching in between the two corners, that's a good way to go. Of course, in the fashion industry, they would never hand sew the collar like that. I don't know if you'd want to call it a home, a home sewing technique or a couture technique, really. We don't need to be as fast as they produce things in fast fashion. We can take our time and do beautiful work like that. That was actually a real pleasure. I'm to the halfway point now, though, so I'm going to switch over and do the stitch in the ditch on the other half just to show you. Another option, instead of stitching in the ditch, I can edge stitch the whole collar. So when I'm doing that, an edge stitch around the whole thing, uh, then I don't want to start at the end. I want to start in the center back, just to hide my back tack as much as possible. So I'm just eyeballing it to sew a millimeter or two onto the collar. And then a nice clean pivot at the very point of the collar. If I fall off the edge, that's not going to look great. So I'm really trying to be careful to just stay on the edge. I do keep my speed up full, but then when I'm sewing, I'm just zoom, zoom, zoom with my foot. I'm trying to be as precise as I can here. I don't want to go slowly though, because when you go slow, I feel like you have more time to wobble. Now here, these pins, I kind of slide out a bit at a time. I don't want to take that pin out too early because I'm going to lose the edge on the inside. But I don't want to hit the pin. So we slide up. Who says sewing is relaxing? Oh my gosh, this is stressful. It looks pretty good though. I'm happy. It looks good. Oof, back where I started. Oof. I gotta say, that's some pretty sweet work. I'm pretty happy with that. Stitching in the ditch is what I was taught in fashion school. In the industry, you just would never take the time to slip stitch like that. But I have to say, it's superior in this case, because that looks ugly. Like, I'm a little worried because that corner is sticking out. That's a raw edge there. That's not nice at all. So I think I probably will end up slip stitching it. The slip stitch wins for sure. And I also put a contrasting thread just to be able to ease the sleeve in. I don't know yet if there's a lot of ease in this sleeve or not, a lot of extra fabric or not, but the instructions say to do two lines of a basting stitch, like a gathering stitch. Honestly, in my whole life, I've never found it necessary to do two lines. I always just do a single line, and I do it at the 15 line or the 5 8 line so that it's right where I need that seam to be smooth. But the first thing we're gonna do is that continuous lap on this opening here. And this is the opening that's like on the back of the wrist. Do you remember, I didn't use the pattern piece they provided. Instead, I cut a piece on the bias three inches wide, and then I pressed it in half with the right side facing out. I'll be sewing that around this cutout, but I wanna do it with the sleeve side up. So here's my sleeve going right side together. So that slit opens right out. I'll just draw white wax on the edge so that you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So I'll bring these edges together. The, the edge of the slit comes to the edge of my bias piece. I want to keep my edges together as long as I can, but obviously I can't keep that edge together because it's going to make folds and puckers here. So it has to just fall back from the edge. 
but I still want to catch it as I sew at the edge of my presser foot. It's together, it falls back, it kind of makes like a very wide open V and then comes back to the edge. So I'll be sewing straight at the edge of my presser foot. I'll just barely catch the end of that slit and then continue on. On this side, it's just gonna look like one straight line of stitching. But on this side, you can see that the edge falls back. It's not hard, it's just maybe hard to explain. Sewing that little piece of continuous lap or that strip of bias, starting with my back tack, keep my edges together for a little while, but then just let the top of the slit just slide back naturally from the edge of the bias. I will keep sewing straight, letting the edge of my presser foot follow the edge of the bias, not follow the slit back. But on the back, this, this stitching line is straight and on the front, it's still straight, but it's the edge that falls back, not your stitching. Get what I mean? Put the bias sewn to the right side of the sleeve. Now I'm just going to push that seam allowance over and press that all going toward the bias strip. So now with that seam allowance pressed going out toward the bias strip, I'm just going to wrap the bias around there nice and clean on the inside, nice and clean on the outside pin in the ditch, all my pins pointing towards where I'm going to start sewing. Here at the top of the slit, I just make sure there's no little puckers that were caught, right? Wrapping over that seam allowance, making sure it's all nice on the outside and the inside, pin in the ditch, all my pins pointing towards where I'm going to start sewing. This continuous lap, it is much easier than the menswear technique. This method is just perfectly fine for women's and it's so much easier and so much faster. So I'll be sewing right in the ditch, right beside the bias, catching the back. I don't feel any need to slip stitch this. Here, the technique of stitch in the ditch is perfectly appropriate. Okay, can you see how you just don't see the stitch when it's in the ditch? My last step for this technique is you fold it in half and I'm just going to do a back tack across this little corner here. So that back tack serves the purpose of keeping the placket going to the inside of the sleeve, right? We don't want this to come poking out. So that little back tack keeps it together on the inside. I'll fold the strip of bias toward the part of the sleeve that's bigger. And then I can cut off the extra. That looks good, right? Dang. I've got the notches for the pleats on the sleeve, but I'm going to deal with those when we put the cuff on. Right now, all I'm going to do is fold that sleeve right side together and sew the whole length and then finish my edges. Okay, so it's a lot. It's a lot of top. The sleeves are long and the shoulder is droopy and I just feel a bit sloppy. I stuck a pin in here. I would want the shoulder to be like picked up here, but I don't think it's the wrong size. I don't think it's droopy there because it's the wrong size because it's like, I don't have that much room over the bust. What I might end up doing is shortening it to a length of a shirt that I can just tuck in because it's more of a tunic, really. I, I don't know if I need a tunic. I'll be picking up the sleeve to there and then I think the sleeve still is a little long and I probably should have thought about that before cutting this one out, but that's okay. Even if I cut off an inch and lose a little bit of my placket, that's no biggie but I'll do this alteration first because obviously that affects the length of the sleeve. So we're getting there. Alrighty, I moved the sleeve in just about half an inch. This shoulder, I just tried it on, it looks much better, much neater and like more sleek. And so now I'm gonna carefully cut off the extra fabric here, just so I can use this little piece that I cut off to duplicate the other side. So that little scrappy bit, and I'm gonna put right sides together with this one, I'm matching up my seams. And then once this is pinned in place, I can trim down this shoulder and it'll be exactly the same. To set the sleeve, I've got the sleeve right side out, turn the shirt inside out, put the whole sleeve into that opening, bring my bottom seams together, 
the side seam of the body, the under seam of the sleeve, pin all your matching points like double notch to double notch. That top notch goes to your, your shoulder seam. Okay, so with the matching points all pinned now, now I'm gonna use my basting stitch or my gathering stitch here. I don't pull the thread, I just hold the thread still and shuffle the fabric along it. And I don't want any puckers. I want it to be smooth along my thread. It's just condensing that fabric in. And I only have to do that just enough to make it fit. Anytime you're setting a sleeve, lots of pins always have the head of the pin sticking up. You're just pinning in all of that extra fabric, evenly distributing it. And then you can baste around and check it. Make sure you don't have any puckers. Make sure that you're happy with where the sleeve is hitting you on the shoulder. And then if it's all good, then you sew around and then finish your edges. So now I'm just going to sew around the circle. I like to sew with the sleeve side facing up so that you can keep your eye to make sure no puckers are happening. But also this, the extra folds of the sleeve don't get in your way, especially if I'm at the serger. And of course I'm always feeling underneath too to make sure that's staying smooth on the underside. So check around, making sure there's no puckers. And then if it's all good, you can pull out your basting thread and you can finish your edges. Alrighty, so I'm going to cut one inch off the bottom of the sleeves. I'm just using this scrap of fabric to replace the notches because these notches mark the pleat that goes at the bottom of the sleeve. When I go to put the cuff on, I'm going to need those notches. I'm going to take those notches and I'm going to pleat them with the pleat pointing toward the edge that has that placket turned under. So this is the edge that's farther away from that seam there. And I'm just going to pin that pleat in place. And then I'm going to take the two cuffs that are interfaced. The instructions say to sew the cuffs together first. I prefer to just do one at a time. When I'm placing the cuff on, again, the edge that's farther from the seam, I want to have that placket turned in and I want to have finger width or seam allowance, 1.5 centimeters, 5 eighths of an inch sticking out. So that little placket comes to just within a finger width of the cuff. I definitely need to have seam allowance sticking out to be able to finish this off properly. And that should just go all the way around. The side of the sleeve that's closer to the seam, the placket stays laying out flat. It doesn't fold in, but it still needs its seam allowance sticking out here. Okay, and then that should fit in just ducky, and yes it does, perfect. I'll pin both and sew both, and then come right back. I sewed it on and then pressed the seam allowance going down toward the cuff piece. Good, now I'm going to take the other cuff, the one that is not interfaced, and I've already pressed under the edge here. I did a little bit less than the seam allowance and turned that edge under. And so now I'm going to put those right sides together and I just want to have this folded edge here that I pressed sticking up a little smidge, just a little smidge above the edge of this piece of the cuff. Yeah, because I'm going to have to be able to catch that edge later. So it sits just a little bit higher, which is why I don't turn down the full seam allowance. Otherwise, I would have nothing sticking up there. And the same on the other side, I want to have a little tiny lip of that cuff sticking up above the one I've already sewn. And then just match up the other edges and sew those right side together. So I sewed around the edge and coming right up close to where my placket is. I just want to kind of follow that line around. And then I want to reduce the bulk around those curves. So I'll just cut closer to the stitching there on the curves. So with my curves, trimmed then I'm just going to flip that cuff right side out use my hands to make a nice shape around that curve it should look really good you can even run a dull pencil or a chopstick around the inside there to just get that seam coming right out to the edge I just want to run to the iron and press a good edge here I want to bring that seam right out to the edge press a good edge there before I pin this in. So with that all pressed nice and flat, now on the inside I'm going to tuck in any threads, any corners, tuck that in, and this folded edge here is going to come up, go a little past my stitching line here. So I'm going to just cover that stitching line 
and then from the outside I'm going to pin in the ditch with my pins pointing towards where I'm going to be starting. So that corner looks nice and neat from the inside and the outside. So that's just going to cover, make sure it's all sitting nice. And then from the outside, pin in the ditch with my pins all pointing the same way. Okay, do a couple pins on one end, then go to the other end, make sure it's all sitting nice, and then meet in the middle. You can either stitch in the ditch or up on the edge, like on the ridge of your cuff. I think I want to do a top stitch all the way around the cuff. So come to the machine with me for that. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch and then I'm going to go around the cuff. I'm making sure to open it out this way and I can feel my folded edge inside there. I'm opening out the ditch and my stitches just disappear in that ditch. So by stitching in the ditch, I've caught the edge inside and now I'm going to just do a top stitch on the edge just so that it looks the same all the way around. So I'm coming back the other way. The stitch I'm doing now across the top here is purely decorative. It's not really necessary, I just want the look of the cuff having that stitch all the way around. Even if you can't really see the stitching, it still flattens out the cuff in a nice way. So hopefully you can see the little stitch line there at the edge and at the edge of the cuff here too. Looks good. Beautiful. All right, after I do the second cuff, all I need is a little buttonhole on each cuff. It's the side where the placket is folded under that gets the buttonhole. So the cuffs are sewn, buttonholes are sewn and cut, and I just have to sew all the buttons on. I decided not to do a button at the top of the collar here. I think I just like it better clean and with the concealed buttons, that'll be fine. The length of this is out of control. The pattern even says it's longer at the front than the back, and I just, I just don't like that. It doesn't look that great. I'm going to cut it off shorter uh, by about like four inches at the front and maybe an inch or so at the back. I have it folded in half nicely lined up. This is the center front. If I don't have a right angle here, it's going to have a point or a V and I don't want that at all. Just one inch at the back. So then with my two right angles drawn, I could either take my uh, curved ruler or if you don't have a curved ruler, you can just trust yourself here. Even if I don't love my line, I'll correct it as I'm cutting. The instructions give nice details about doing a double folded hem. Beautiful, but I'm going to be just fine by surging around and then folding my single fold. So I'm just turning up a little bit more than my surging. And I'm going to just start with a back tack. And so now you just make the shape with your hands and go. Sometimes I see beginners let this get bigger and bigger. Just push it down, just keep the same amount, shape it with your hands first. If it doesn't look good, don't sew it. On a curved hem like this, I never pin. You'll just end up organizing twice. I'm pushing down with my left, pulling up a little bit with my right to make that nice curve. Tuck in any threads. So I'm halfway, here's my side seam. And so now I kind of have to stretch it around a little bit compact with my left hand, stretch with my right a little bit to get this to flow nicely around this, the opposite direction curve. That worked out nicely. One touch up with the iron, that's gonna look really good. Okay, there's the final product. And I have to say that was just a joy to cut and sew fabric that I just love. To work right from scratch and all the way through the process it was really a pleasure. I am glad that I shortened it. That shorter length, it's much more wearable. I can wear it either out or tucked in, and I'm happy with the way both of those look. Shortening the sleeve worked out really nicely. The shoulders fit well now. I don't feel sloppy. I feel really nice in this top. The fabric is nice and soft. It's, it's a pleasure. It was an expensive project though, and I'll definitely be going back to my upcycling for my next video. But for today, this really was a joy. I'm so glad you were along for the ride. Thank you so much if you stuck it all the way out to the end here. Knowing that somebody's watching really helps keep me going, and I appreciate it so much. I can't wait to sew with you again. So until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.